Hey, lovelies, and welcome back. I'm still not done with this trip down memory lane yet. I'm still reliving being eight years old and uh, kind of enjoying it. So uh, you're stuck with a little bit of Sonic for now. There'll be a little bit more of something else relatively soon, but I'm enjoying this very much. I love these new zones. I mean, this one is not from anywhere. It's not from any of the original games. This is one made exclusively for this um, this game. And it's really, really good. It's got a, a really lovely theme and a great soundtrack. Also, the colours are gorgeous. Love it. Hoping there's a few more like this, actually. I don't know how exactly how many there are. And how many are, like, reworked versions of uh, Classic Zones. Either way... Oh, this is classic Sonic stuff. Where it is just speed, you know? You just hold left and jump occasionally. That's as far as it goes. <laughs> Apparently, uh, I've unlocked bonuses. Sonic can do a few more moves now from uh, some of the original games. He can do some of his moves from Sonic CD, which is kind of cool, really. Now, which way are we going? Not this way, clearly. Oh, yeah. Okay. Clearly I'm getting something wrong here. Hmm, is that supposed to... I think that's supposed to send me up a bit higher than it is doing. Hmm. Oh, there we go. What's this? <laughs> I like the little snail badnik there. The robots are called badniks, by the way. Those are the uh, creations of the bad guy. Do uh, no, it's Dr. Robotnik in the West. And as Eggman in Japan. Love these guys. Oh, it's so fast and colourful. There really is not very much like it. Okay. Okay. Which one's this? Right, this is the second special zone from Sonic 3. I don't think I can perfect this one. I might be able to. Let's give it a go. Let's see if I can. Hmm. Some of them, you've got to be incredibly precise in the order in which you collect things. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Like, hopefully, somewhere around this zone, there are some loose rings. Because if not, it's going to be next to impossible to get a perfect on. Which would be annoying. I don't know what the effect of not getting a perfect is. I'm sure it's not that profound, to be honest, but hey. I used to spend hours obsessing over this stuff when I was a kid and I had nothing better to think about. You know, in what patterns to uh, do these special zones to get the perfect and all of that garbage. Hey! And there was once upon a time when I could perfect them all. I'm sure those times are long past. Because, as I've already mentioned, I'm not eight years old anymore. Okay. Hey, we got the perfect. Excellent. Hey, there we go. So that should unlock some new things on the options menu. Because we got the gold. You can get a gold or a silver, and each one uh, unlocks different bonuses for the main game, which is kind of fun. This game, this level reminds me a little bit of levels from um, Sonic CD more than anything. I think Sonic CD is a really big influence on this game. It's clear the... Uh, creators have got quite a bit of an affection for that one. Sonic CD was the first game to appear on the Mega CD, which was a kind of a revolution in many respects. It wasn't very good. Um, it was one of the early CD-based video game consoles that was actually an add-on for the Mega Drive. And most of the games for it, the vast, vast, vast majority, were really terrible sort of like full motion vi uh, full motion video affairs where there was absolutely no gameplay whatsoever other than pressing right occasionally when such was called for but Sonic CD was pretty good it was just a Sonic game that had um, full motion video segments that was pretty much it 
had a really, really, really good soundtrack. Like, really good. Oh, fire shield. I want that. Uh, there we go. This will protect us from fire and also allows us to do that, which is fun. It will also deflect enemy attacks. Oh, hello. So this is the boss, is it? Egg T the E. Okay. Hey! Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I see how it works. Okay. So each weather report is going to give us a different effect, right? Yeah, that's it. Oh, fuck. There we go. Oh, I see. Right. That's kind of fun. Oh, and again. Alright, let's grab on. There we are. Oh, nice one, Tails. Tails got a hit there. There we go. That was kind of fun. The bosses are really inventive in this game. They've all got, like, um, not only a theme, but a real sense of humour about them. The reason you get all of the little animals out of the uh, machine at the end is because um, that's what Robotnik uses to turn the animals into uh, his robot minions. Oh, I know this level! This is the second level from Sonic and Knuckles, which was the fourth Sonic game. The flying battery... Oh, the music in this level just rocks. It is so good. There's a rumour that has pretty much been confirmed at this point that... Michael Jackson was involved to a certain degree with making the music for Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. And if you listen to a lot of the tracks from Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles, which were basically two halves of the same game, you can hear certain music motifs that sound like Michael Jackson's work. Um, the reason that it became a rumour and he was never really credited was partway through the production, uh, the, all of the scandals started to break regarding what was going, uh, purportedly going on at the Neverland Ranch and all that kind of thing. So Sega suddenly decided, oh, well, it might be best not to have Michael associated with our game. But if you listen, although the tracks that Jackson himself created aren't necessarily in the games, you can still hear elements of them. Like there's a level in Sonic 3 called Ice Cap Zone. And the opening tracks of that, they... Honestly, it sounds so much like certain Michael Jackson tracks. I even remember when I was a kid, my mum listening to it when I was playing it and saying something like, that sounds like a Michael Jackson song. And it remained a rumour for ages, right up until, well, the advent of the internet, really. When people could actually go and find out, you know. Of course, back then, companies like Sega could keep shit like that quiet if they wanted to. It wasn't that difficult. We didn't really have uh, unadulterated access to information like we do now. I mean, my god, try keeping something like that quiet these days. It ain't gonna happen. In fact, the effort to keep it quiet would likely draw attention to it. It would have the Streisand effect. It's kind of sad, really. I, um, Jackson was so big. Before those scandals hit, Jackson was a phenomena, the like of which it's rather difficult to describe to people who weren't around at the time because there is no analogue. And there never has been since him. It's a really strange thing. He was everywhere. For a brief period, you could not turn on any television channel, any radio station. And this was pre-internet, of course, so there was no internet. But if the internet was around, he would have been all over it. Oh. Ah, oh, I should have done that in a different way. I didn't get the perfect for that one. Just the silver for that one. Oh, well. Back to the flying battery zone. This is a difficult one, actually, flying battery. It's a, it's a little bit more involved than just running to the right or left. It's basically a giant airship that Robotnik uses for his nefarious purposes. You see the little badniks that look like computer mice? They're called Technoscoops. 
Ow! I lost my lightning shield. That's a blastoid, I do believe. Hey, we're outside again. Why this thing would need propellers, I don't know, but there we are. I just love how unnecessarily humongous this airship is. To accommodate the fact that it's also like a Sonic the Hedgehog zone, you know? <laughs> okay, let's try it again, why not? I'm enjoying this. This one's... this one's a pain. I remember this one. This one is an absolute pain. It's a bit more spaced out than the others, so it's actually very, very easy to lose your way in this one. You've got to be kind of careful with this one. And it continually speeds up as you're going. Um, the Sonic & Knuckles game that I mentioned earlier was really interesting. It was actually revolutionary for its time. Uh, it came very late in the Sega Mega Drive's life. But it was this cartridge that you could... It had like a flip top and you could slot other game cartridges into the top of it. So originally it was... It contained the second half of Sonic the Hedgehog 3. It was like the second half of the story. So you could slot Sonic 3 into it and play this massive game from the beginning of Sonic the Hedgehog 3 right up until uh, the end of Sonic and Knuckles. It was epically huge. Oh, this is weird. Look at this. Ah, weird sort of step system going on there. That's very peculiar. I don't remember that at all. Aha. Uh-oh. I may have cocked it up, though. Unless there's another one of those around somewhere. Where are we? Uh, this is what I mean by this one can be really difficult. Got to see if I can find the last four. I don't know where they could possibly be, though. <laughs> That's fun. That catapults you clear across the zone. No sign of them. Hmm. Oh, here we are. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, I nearly did it then. Hang on. Hang on. I need to collect the ring. In a moment. Oh, cocked it up, but I got the perfect. God damn it. Oh well. Alrighty ho, let's get out of here. But yeah, it was really epic, and it, it was one of the few games of its type, like these sort of, sort of side scrolling platformers that were all the rage of the era, that actually had a kind of semblance of story about it. Like you would get these little, they couldn't like do t dialogue or anything like that, and text wouldn't work in a Sonic game. God, I wish they kept to hold of that lesson. But text just wouldn't work in a Sonic game, so it tells its story visually. It's all through what happens on screen. And it's really cool. It's actually a very, very cool thing. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Sonic and Knuckles combined together is the most narratively heavy of all of the Sonic games, but it does it... It does it in this way that doesn't have any, like, preamble. It's not problematic or sort of tacked on, as like, the stories for a lot of, like, 2D games were back then. It was integrated into the game. And I remember loving it. I, it really, because it had these, like, subtle narrative elements, it really drew you into the world. As sort of silly and cutesy and fun as it is, it had, it had this sense that you were doing something. Which was a rare thing. The only other games I can think of from the era that did things like that were on the Super Nintendo. It was things like um, Super Pro Protector, uh, uh, Contra. Uh, Super Metroid is probably one of the best examples of that phenomena. Oh, it's Robotnik. There he is. Or Eggman, as he's known. Oh, he's dumped us in the rubbish. Well, that's alright. And we're going to have to fight the uh, trash compactor by the looks of it. Alright. I love all the bits of dead badniks at the bottom. That's really cool. All those bits of machinery are from previous games. They're all like bits of badnik from different Sonic games. That's cool. Okay, what's it going to do? Is it going to die? Oh no! No! <laughs> We're having a Star Wars moment. Ah, there we go. Remixed Flying Battery Zone. I love the remixed soundtracks. 
it was one of the the more sophisticated games for the Mega Drive of the era. They threw quite a lot at it, actually, for a Sonic game. And it was, I mean, along with Sonic and Knuckles, that it was the last proper Sonic game for the Mega Drive, so... In fact, it was the last proper Sonic game for a long time, because, of course, they, did, they, they started just not making them for some reason. The Saturn was going to have a Sonic game, and then it just fell through, um, for whatever reason. Um, and we didn't get another Sonic, like a proper Sonic game until technically, I'm not going to get that because I like the music, I'm enjoying the music too much. Uh, technically the, the next Sonic game would be Sonic Adventure for the Dreamcast and that was pretty bad. Let's be 100% fair, it was pretty awful. Ooh, this is getting dicey, I love the weather effects. My god, if you saw weather effects like this on the Mega Drive, we would have been ecstatic. It would have been like... The magazines would have been talking about it. You know, it would have been a thing. Hello, what did we just do? We opened something. I heard... Ah, there's a door. Hang on. If I can slow him down a little bit. The momentum at which he moves is unbelievable. Okay. <clears throat> yes, that was a little robot chicken. I think they're called... What are they called? Clucks or something like that? What? Oh, god damn it. Oh, hello. Oh, I don't want them. Those are the power sneakers. They make him run faster, believe it or not. I don't really want them. He runs quite fast enough for me at the moment. And they fire eggs out of their little cannons. That's kind of cute. Originally not from this zone. They were from a zone from Sonic 2 called the Wing Fortress. If I remember correctly, or the Wing Fortress? Something like that. Very similar to this though, like a big flying fortress thing. Oh, hello. I'm caught by something. Ah, oh, you little shit. Ah, uh, oh, oh, these guys are testing my patience. Aha! Gotcha. Okay. Where are we going? Very hard to tell. <laughs> Part of the fun of these games, though, is the fact that you don't really have to think too hard about them. You can just move. Oh, we're in the... Oh, we've got to be very careful. We're in the trash compactor. <laughs> Oh, I like this. This wasn't in the original Flying Battery Zone. Whoa. Okay, I need some rings and I'm gonna die. Fair to take it carefully until we get... Come on. Oh, down we go again. Hey, rings! And we lost them again. <laughs> Oh, this is, we're, it feels like we might be close to the boss. Does it not? There's a definite feeling of being near the end of the zone now. God, it's a lot more complex than it used to be. I know that. Okay. Where are we going? Oh, we're outside again. Oh, I remember this bit. Yeah, you've got to destroy the... Um, We've got to destroy the little piloty dudes. That's a technical term, by the way, that I've just come up with. Oh shit! Oh, I fell off the zone! I fell! No! That's always been instant death in a Sonic game. You fall off the zone, you're done. That's why being outside of a zone like this is so hazardous. I can't believe I used to be able to do this, like, in my sleep. There was a time that like, the muscle memory would have allowed me to do it without even thinking. I've got to be careful, because he's going to activate these. Gotcha! Oh fuck! Hang on! Oh, oh no! I will get this right in a minute. Fortunately, I've got lots of lives, so I should be alright. I mean, they... The... So, 
Sonic's sort of rival was Mario, you know? And Sega made no bones about that. But Sonic games were never quite as sophisticated as Mario games. They never quite had the the the, the variety that they had. Or the uh, the invention that they had. They were pretty much all the same, you know, barring one or two little adaptations and in, uh, and innovations they're pretty much all the same but i i kind of like the purity of them i appreciate that oh fuck hmm there we go i think yeah we're at the boss okay so what is it gonna be oh it's this thing we can't hit this thing directly we've got to hit it into the the, the walls which is actually much easier said than done, isn't it? Especially when you're on the wrong side of the damn thing. God damn it. We need to hit it into the spikes. Which is uh, rather difficult, actually. Oh, did we do it here? There we go, that's how you do it. We need to do that eight times, I think? Whilst avoiding its attacks, which is tricky. <laughs> it's such a silly thing, I love it. It's so silly. Come on then, do your thing. I don't know whether you noticed, but earlier we saw him building this. Um, when he attacked us in the first zone, at the end of the first zone, we saw blueprints on the wall. And it was this thing. Look at his flailing legs. I like the fact that he's upside down. It's so silly. Oh, we flinged us off the wrong side. Oh, no. Come on. Oh, no, 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 no. We missed. God damn it. Okay, let's get it. Oh, no. We flung ourselves into the spikes. Wonderful. And again. Fantastic. It's kind of a long-winded boss, this one. Has to be said. Gotcha. Aha. But uh, again, I appreciate the invention that they've gone with. Hey, we got you! And off he goes. He always gets away. He's always got some means of escape as uh, Robotnik slash Dr. Eggman. I don't know how they reconcile it in the, the present day games. Whether they just call him Eggman or they, they call him Dr. Robotnik or what. No idea. Where are we going? Press Garden. This is a new one. Oh, what lovely music. Oh, Press Garden, as in like a news press, yeah? Oh, that's very cool. I like that. Oh, listen to the music. Lovely colours, too. I do love the vibrancy of these Sonic games, I really do. <clears throat> oh, I love the moving bits in the background. That's very cool. I mean, one thing the Sonic games have always been is very highly stylized. It's sort of what's maintained their appeal over the years as the... The games themselves are varied in quality, I think that's fair to say. But the the art style is something that people just can't get enough of. You know, I mean, there's, there's a whole sort of, like, community for people who love the, the artwork of Sonic the Hedgehog games. Oh, this is cute. Okay, that's fun. Is, this, is that the pattern then? Is it like one old zone, one new zone? Is that how it goes? If so, I'm kind of for that. I think it's fun. Oh, it's going to crush me. <laughs> hey, yeah, we're doing alright. Uh-oh. Here we are again. Okay. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> They're so fast-paced, I love... It's, it's it's very much of its era, this. This is the style of game that was so popular at the time. 
um, so much so that there were hundreds of emulators. Like, uh, there was Bubsy the Bobcat, there were everybody, every video game company decided that they needed an animal mascot, like a platformy animal mascot. And so you got loads of games that tried to ape the style of the Sonic games because they were just popular. Uh, Bubsy the Bobcat is probably the most infamous example. Uh, a game that has the speed of a Sonic game but doesn't understand the style or the appeal. Because the main character is just hideous. But there were hundreds of them. There were absolutely hundreds and most of them were crap. The vast majority were just poor imitations. <clears throat> where? Okay, where are we going? Oh, right, okay. Alright. Ooh, there's some classic Sonic sort of precision jumping here. Yeah? This is only be fun with Knuckles, because Knuckles, uh, my favourite character, can glide and can climb walls. Actually, it'll be fun playing as Tails alone, because he can... Um, he can fly. He, he spins his twin tails around and can actually fly. Don't ask me how it works, because it, it shouldn't. But, hey, there we are. Where are we going? Okay, fair enough. Is there another way round? Ah, uh ha -huh. ha. There most certainly is. Uh oh. Music is awesome. They've done a great job with the new soundtracks. What's great about them is they sound they sound like present day soundtracks. They're up to date, but they also feel in keeping with the style of the soundtracks of Sonic games, which is a, a key aspect. You know, it's part of what makes the games what they are. It's one thing they've always had for Sonic games: absolutely banging soundtracks. Oh, okay. Oh, mini boss. Hello. Oh, okay. So we're going to have to get him to bash these, I think. Come on. I've got, I think we've got to get him to bash these. That's it. And then we get to bash him. That's how it works. Okay. Okay, come on then. That's how it works. Come on then. Oh, you missed. I like how goofy these robots are, I've got to say. <laughs> oh! It's snowing! We're going to have a winter theme for the next zone. Or an ice theme, that'd be cool. Zones in these games always had, like, themes. They, you know, like a winter theme, a summer theme. Or... Oh, this is beautiful! So we did the press part, now we're doing the garden part, right? This is gorgeous! Look at this! Oh, he's frozen! <laughs> oh, that's kind of cool! God, look at the dips in the background! That is beautiful! That's pretty much it for Sonic games. It's aesthetics and music. That's it. That, that's pretty much all you're going to get. It's very pretty, and it sounds good. And it's very, very, very fast. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And that's really all you should want from it, to be honest. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, be careful here. Okay. Zone is very uh, handily playing itself here. God, this is beautiful. Oh shit. Right, there must be a spring or something around here. Aha, I thought there might be. Okay. Now, how do I get out? Oh, right, okay. Well... All of these badniks we're seeing around as well, they're from different games. Some of them are unique, like the woodpecker one, there's unique, but that one, 
that from, I believe, Knuckles Chaotix, which was a spin-off game. It was a spin-off Sonic game uh, that featured Knuckles and a host of other characters, like tertiary characters, some of whom we will be seeing in this game, by the way. Oh, hello. The Chaotix crew. Some of them we will be seeing. Oh, look, he's actually, uh, the platform's alive. He actually is a bad man. Yeah. Oh, water shield. Oh, this is tricky. You've got to use their shots as little platforms. Come on. Oh, okay, right. There we go. I'm just enjoying that soundtrack. It's stunning. Oh, hello! Who the hell are you? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So we've got to get him... We've got to get him to leap over us, and then he's vulnerable. Okay. Yeah, if we knock him out of his leap, then he's vulnerable. Oh, rings! Oh, shit. Oh, shit! Now we're really vulnerable. <laughs> Whoa! Uh-oh. This is going to be tough. Without any rings, this is going to be a pain. Oh, he got us. <laughs> I thought he might. We need rings. He's one of the big robots we saw in the, the beginning cutscene. Come on. Do your thing. Hey -ya! Gotcha. Come on. Boom. Oh, I missed him. God damn it. Okay. I've got him now, I think. I like his cape. He's the martial artist theme bot, yeah? That's kind of cool. Oh, never. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is going to cost us. Unless we can get some, like, really naughty hits in on him, this is going to be tough now. Oh, oh God! <laughs> Need to save some rings, clearly. Okay. Ow, thank you. Just get as many hits in as we can, I suppose. Just, you know. You can sort of brute force him. Although, he does make you pay for it. Oh, he's dead. There we go. Oh, no, not dead. Oh, he retreated. Oh, that suggests to me that we'll be fighting him again. That's interesting. That's very interesting. I got a cup of tea, by the way. Oh, it's Robotnik. What's he doing? Speedway! This is one of the levels from Sonic CD that I was telling you about earlier. But Sonic CD had this weird time travel thing where you could travel into the past, the present, or the future of each zone. This is the past version of Stardust Speedway. That's very cool. Okay, my loves, I suppose we'll be tackling this when we come back. Until then, bye-bye! Uh,